What is going on, friends? I am back at the lab after a very successful Vegas to Reno. What an absolutely epic experience. Can't wait to show you all what it's all about right now. Let's get it. I'm like, get out of the way. We're lighting them up with a horn. And that's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. So like, if we finish this race, with all Broncos winning all three of the classes they competed, it's just historic moment and uh, just amazing to be a part of. So it takes a freaking army to do these races. So this is our brand new chase truck. It is the beast. And we have our other chase truck, our tremor, extra fuel, pulls the bad boy. The best tow rigs in the business. Yeah, I said it. Tell me a better truck than a Ford Super Duty for work. I'll wait. Raptors, the whole squad. What's up, guys? The DR, turnkey race truck. Shoo! Uh, Lauren will be doing the morning stint, leaving the line around noonish. And then I'll be jumping in around five or six, all things go well, and then take the rest, uh, the next six ish hours of racing uh, into the dark, probably do midnight, one o'clock in the morning to grab that checkered flag. So super pumped about this. Uh, it's going to be an amazing experience. Never raced. Uh, I've had a couple uh, night races, but never had a night race in the desert. So uh, very cool. Uh, Project X lights. We got uh, FF70s, put the orange film on the front. And then up top, we've got the HP uh, sevens. So uh, we'll usually run these lower ones because in the dust, the ones up top aren't the greatest. Uh, if you're wondering what's in my hand, these are catheters. In case you got to go pee pee while you're racing. This right here is very, very cool. Uh, just a little background, like this class is a 35 inch class and Chevy um, has been kind of racing in it on their own for the most part. And so we wanted to come in that class race against Chevy, but we were not willing, you know, the Bronco comes with 37 stock. And so we we're not willing to put 35s on it. Ford was not willing to put 35s on it. So it took some discussions and, and negotiations, if you will, between um, Chevy and Ford uh, and the series to make it happen. So they approved the 37s, but they forced us to be on a C, load range C, load range C tire. And, um, Nitto only makes uh, a D. So uh, we had to make some concessions to make this passion project happen, but we are here and magic is about to go down. So first thing, doing a desert race like Vegas to Reno, that is 550 miles point to point, takes an unbelievable amount of preparation and effort. And what was executed prior to the race is an unbelievable feat on its own, let alone what needs to happen from the start of the race to the finish of the race. Um, this was a multi-pit race. That's basically where strategy starts. It's like, okay, obviously we know we're finished, we're leaving the start line, but where are we stopping? Where are we fueling? Where are we doing driver change? And basically figuring out how to do that as efficiently as possible. fuel truck about to dump the good stuff into the race truck so we're gonna stop Lauren's gonna be like what the hell are they doing here because we got to be at the next pit, uh, couple pits up before they get in so we figured we put a little smile on his face a little race update while we're here um, it's no secret we came to race Chevy uh, they have two trucks out here uh, a Colorado and a Silverado uh, we passed the Colorado at race mile eight uh, my assumption is he knew Lauren was coming started pushing too hard and made a big mistake and lost something. 
um, and the Silverado evidently had to pit for a little while and is, is pretty well behind Lauren. Lauren has passed just about every 4600 truck, a lot of the UTVs, and he's ripping. Just really nice pace. And so uh, we're about to watch a really badass pit stop from this one of the best teams in the biz. Well, I believe the best team in the biz, but um, you know, it's, uh, it's gonna be really cool to witness this, so it was worth the stop. Uh, Brad in the Bronco DR is doing what he's doing. He's went leading his class, and I believe Bailey Cole is leading his class in a 46. So like, if we finish this race with all Broncos winning all three of the classes they competed, it's just historic moment and uh, just amazing to be a part of, so. And that's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're heading to this. So Lauren uh, obviously did his job of getting uh, out in front of uh, the competitors very early on and kept a great pace to get to his first pit stop. Um, it was really fun to see our team just make magic and execute a perfect pit stop. Uh, and also confuse Lauren because he's probably like, why are you here? You're supposed to be there. Um, so anyway, that was really cool. And then for the second plan stop was pit seven, which is when uh, Lauren uh, and I were switching driver changes and Eric and Jeremy were switching co-driver changes. By the time Lauren got there, uh, we already knew basically that we had the class win if we finished the race and uh, we were also ahead of the full-size truck uh, that you know we wanted to, to go and, and race against. So really it was just a matter of me getting in the truck and just driving a good pace and finishing the race. I really probably drove like 70, 80% in some sections because I started to have so much fun, um, but the experience was so unbelievable. All right, this is the moment. All the preparation, all the strategy, all the planning. Jeremy and I are about to hop in. Lauren is bringing us a good clean car. Everything is good with the Bronco Raptor. The strategy right now is to go out and just drive clean and have a fun run in the desert with a friend, honestly. And enjoy a beautiful night racing under the desert stars in a badass Bronco Raptor. Um, amazing opportunity. I'm very grateful to be here. Super pop, let's get it. hours in the sun started setting and there was just this one unbelievable moment which I hope we can pull this clip where the mountains are in front of me and they're just backlit by like an aura of like red from the sun and it was just like I'm just like had to like get off being fixated on the beauty to remember that I'm racing this badass Bronco Raptor uh, because it was just so unbelievable and as the sun went down everyone knows the desert gets a little spooky and it got a little weird. One moment I came around a corner and there was just a big longhorn cow just like looking at me. Boo! I'm like, get out of the way. We're lighting him up with the horn. He's just like looking at me. Finally, he left. Oh man, what, what an amazing experience. So I've got to talk about this Bronco Raptor. We did a test video and a lot of people are like, oh, it's not stock, it's clickbait. It's stock. 
Like literally stock is a rock except for safety. The thing doesn't even have a freaking oil cooler on it, ladies and gentlemen. It does have a diff cooler. Due to Ford's durability, they said it didn't need an oil cooler and it ran fine. What this truck is, if you took a stock Bronco Raptor, gutted it, put a cage in it, put electronics for communication and data logging in it, put a bigger fuel cell in it and some room for a couple spare batteries, or sorry, spare tires, and change the springs on the live valve shock system. I mean, that's that's in a nutshell what it is. I mean, obviously some skid plates and protection stuff, but like the powertrain is 100% stock. The motor, the transmission, the torque converter, bone, absolute stock, the differential, bone stock, both of them, the steering, bone stock, the tie rods, the axles. I mean, it's crazy. We were able to get in this truck and drive it for 550 miles and it is so well balanced so fun to drive it's just so intuitive i mean literally baja mode turn the stability control off and let it rip and uh, that's exactly what we did you know in 550 miles there is a lot that can go wrong and literally all we had to do the entire race was put fuel in the hot rod we were running shell v power nitro plus straight out of the pump for this entire race and it was no drama, you know, big thing to worry about out in those temperatures, vapor lock. And um, we actually replaced a race fuel that this truck normally runs on with 93 octane fuel because the specs were that good. And uh, Ford approved it, the engineers approved it, and it worked flawlessly. And that's how the race went, you know? And, and when I say the strategy, I mean, there's so much more behind the scenes, a lot of moving parts. I mean, we had two chase trucks, multiple team members kind of piggybacking each other to get to where they need to get to the whole media team bouncing around to try to catch us at certain spots and then obviously you know myself and uh, lauren and our co-drivers having strategy to get through the race right whether whether we are on drive safe mode whether we're on we're on kill mode the other thing is that you don't even get to pre-run this race this race you get notes and it's like go have fun right and that is sketchy now the race series did do a great job of marking everything, but uh, Jeremy, my co-driver, did an amazing job using the satellite, marking turns, and, and really getting as much data as we could uh, without uh, being able to pre-run. And so, you know, I wish, well, I don't wish, but I'm glad there's not a bunch of drama I can talk to you about. It almost makes it seem like it's too easy, uh, or was too easy. Um, and especially when you look at our time of what we finished and where we would have been in other classes outside of a stock Bronco Raptor class is pretty damn impressive. Our end time, get this, for those of you that know numerology or anything, 1111, look it up. My belief is that 1111, when you see those numbers, that means you're doing exactly what you should be doing in those moments. And it's just a little reminder from the universe, keep it going. And so the fact that our race ended at that exact time, I mean, we probably left 30, 45 minutes out there if we were really hustling. But one goal was to go finish the race nice and clean. And the other goal was to, uh, to beat Chevy and their two trucks that they had out there, which uh, we did relatively easily. Ford is very committed to what they've got going on in off-road and uh, picking and choosing big races to go and compete and uh, make best efforts to win and you know to be able to be part of the team that that made that happen this time was a huge honor and very proud how I performed uh, even into the night which is effectively you know three four o'clock in the morning my time you know uh, my personal preparation and the way I took care of my body and planned ahead of time you know doing a lot of sauna work staying up late when i was back home on the east coast to get my body acclimated and uh you know my my meals and and hydration approaches all was just worked perfect and so um really enjoy this type of racing it's very challenging as a driver it's very fun and very rewarding i mean to be able to drive at a really nice pace for six hours is pretty awesome and you know, it's a good representation of endurance and focus. And you would think uh, quite the opposite from someone that's come from drifting, but all of my mental strategies and my approach to, to driving in this type of terrain and vehicle is, you know, translates uh, very well. So I had one of the greatest racing experiences 
of my life doing it uh, to date. So um, it was just a epic running that truck and having the opportunity to do it with our badass team that makes it all possible. And uh, yeah, they prepped it amazing and it ran flawless. So, you know, huge, huge shout out to the Ford engineers that were part of the initial build of the Bronco Raptor that goes in the dealerships, as well as carrying over and um, building this one for us to go and have fun and uh, beat others that are in the desert with it. Huge thanks to, to Ford Performance and the Huseman brothers who really built this truck for Baja last year. And uh, we talked him into letting us bring out the Vegas Arena to, to race against Chevy and um, yeah. Here we are on the podium. Unfortunately, you know, we weren't able to get a, a real race with Chevy and hopefully they can get together and uh, come out and hang with the Broncos in the future. Yeah, if you stick around for about three or four hours, you see some Chevys. <laughs> I, didn't, hey, I didn't mean that. <laughs> so next off road race for me is Crandon. Super pumped for that race. I won it last year, my first time winning Crandon. Lauren has won it like always. And so to get the win last year, despite him having some challenges, uh, hopefully he has a clean race and we get to go head to head this time because I'm ready. I'm ready for him. Lauren is tough to beat on short courses, but always striving to be on his times. And um, he's just a different level of human being with the things he'll do behind the wheel. So uh, I'm excited. He's probably my greatest competitor out there aside from myself. Uh, we're on the same team. We're sharing notes. We're teaching and learning from each other until the flag drops and then he's just another competitor. <laughs> all right, friends, that is a wrap for Vegas Torino. Hope you all enjoyed this adventure. Much love, look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Whoa!